Where's my daughter? If you come with Where me, is she? Where she is she? She's dead, goddammit! You found her. No, I didn't find her. The woman had just boarded the plane when she noticed something bizarre. Long-haul flights are usually full, but at the moment, only she and her daughter were on board, and her daughter had been silent since she boarded. An inexplicable uneasiness came over her. Luckily, a few moments later, passengers were boarding the plane one by one. Ellie didn't notice anything unusual, so she felt a little more at ease. This is a 10-hour long-haul flight. Shortly after takeoff, people were falling asleep. Ellie noticed two rows of empty seats in the rear cabin, so she took her daughter there to lie down. And weird things start to happen from this moment on. When she woke up from a nap, she realized that her daughter was gone. At this time, Ellie did not realize the seriousness of the problem. She just thought her daughter was playing and ran off somewhere. But when she searched all three passenger cabin of the plane and couldn't find her daughter, Ellie finally panicked. One of the flight attendants, after understanding her situation, on the radio, tell all passengers to look out for a blonde girl about six years old. But here's the weird thing, a long time has passed without any news. Even the passenger in front of Ellie said she hadn't noticed Ellie had her daughter with her. Ellie was in a trance. She bustled back to her seat to check. The bear that her daughter had been carrying was right there. This proves that her memory is fine. She hurriedly asked the crew to do a full search of the aircraft, but the crew didn't think so, because no one can leave a sealed cabin at 3,000 meters. Then they said perfunctorily that they'd report it to the captain, but until 10 minutes had passed, the crew did not do any search. Suddenly, Ellie noticed two stewardesses muttering something in a panic. She rushed after them, asking if something had happened to her daughter, but the stewardess who hung up the phone said, Miss Pratt, I'm sorry, but I don't think that she's here. The flight attendant contacted the ground crew. They did not investigate her daughter's boarding record. Her daughter's name wasn't on the passenger list. Ellie thought it was ridiculous. She hurriedly pulled out her boarding certificate to prove it. But the only boarding pass in her pocket was her own. Ellie instantly became more anxious. She rushed to open the baggage hold. She found her daughter's backpack missing. But daughter can't reach this height. So someone must have taken her. Ellie panicked immediately. She needed to talk to the captain. Then she went straight to the cockpit. But as she frantically rapped on the hatch, she was suddenly stopped by the air marshal behind her. her behavior had seriously affected the other passengers, but she made so much noise that she alerted the captain. But all he did was ask Ellie if she'd been drinking or taking any drugs before she boarded the plane, and he obviously thought she was hallucinating. And Ellie replied with little confidence that she was on some anti-anxiety medication. Then she explained that her husband had fallen to his death six days earlier. That's when she started taking her medication. The purpose of the flight was to bring her husband's body back home for burial. His coffin was in the cargo hold of the plane. Then she got anxious. She made sure her daughter was on the plane with her. Ellie even held her hand before she fell asleep. This is definitely not a hallucination. Her anxious look brought out some sympathy in the captain. Even though everyone said they hadn't seen the girl, he also decided to tell all passengers to return to their seats, to check every place where a child could hide. But this time, they checked every corner of the cabin, including the baggage compartment and the bathroom. Even the cargo and equipment compartments still haven't found any sign of her daughter. And that's when the announcement came over the radio. All passengers can start moving around and resting. That means the crew decided to stop the search. Ellie immediately and angrily approached the captain. She was furious that they shouldn't have ended it so hastily, but the captain gave her news he couldn't accept. Where's my daughter? If you come with Where me, is she? Where she is she? Dead, God damn it! You found her. No, I didn't find her. It's Brad. They received a fax from the hospital where Ellie's husband died, said her daughter was brought in at the same time as her husband. Her husband jumped with her daughter. This was completely unacceptable to Ellie. She remembered her daughter playing in the park when her husband died. Immediately after that she started to get dizzy. Had she really gone mad? The captain said nothing more. He told Jack to take Ellie back to her seat. Afterwards, Ellie woke up in her seat. The captain arranged for a psychiatrist to comfort her. It is common for people to experience hallucinations after a traumatic experience. And Ellie also calmed down. She tried to come to terms with it. But then Ellie turned her head. She saw a little heart symbol painted on the glass. Ellie's head snapped out of it. It was the same mark her daughter had made when she first boarded the plane. She held her emotions in check and said she wanted to go to the bathroom. Jack did not refuse her request and accompanied her there. Before entering, Ellie asked Jack to uncuff her. And as soon as she entered, Ellie took off her blouse. She wrapped her fist in her shirt and smashed open the door above her head. Above it was the aircraft's equipment bay. Just then Jack, who was worried about an accident, knocked on the door. Ellie hurriedly poked her head down and said she'd be right out. Then she immediately picked out a line and plugged it in. The oxygen masks fell off the people's heads. Everyone thought there was an emergency. The cabin was in chaos, and Ellie unplugged another wire and shorted out the equipment. All the lights went out. Ellie took advantage of the confusion and escaped from the toilet. She got into the lift and burst into the cargo hold. She called out her daughter's name, but there was no response. And just then, the captain told Jack there was nothing unusual about the plane. Jack realized immediately that Ellie had played him. After some searching, Ellie found her husband's coffin. She said,
suddenly realized that maybe her daughter was hidden inside. She rushed to open the coffin, but there was only her husband's body inside. Judy went limp in an instant. She hoped someone would help her, and that's when Jack found her. This time, he handcuffed her without mercy. He says because of her crazy behavior, the captain decided to land the plane immediately. And at that moment, Judy was even more convinced that she was right. If her daughter really died with her husband, then the coffins herself brought on the plane should be two coffins. So she asked for permission to search the plane once it landed. But Jack only told her. Once the plane landed, she'd be arrested immediately. As she walked down the aisle to her seat, people were applauding. This crazy woman's behavior has delayed everyone's flight. Jack took her to the last row. But once seated, Ellie remained convinced that her daughter was on the plane. She pleaded with Jack. If you let them arrest me, she's gone forever. I'm picking you looking at her poorly. Jack seemed to take pity on her. After a moment of silence, he called the stewardess and asked her to keep an eye on Ellie. He was going to talk to the captain again. Looks like he's going to help Ellie. But he turned around and walked into the cargo hold. He went straight to Ellie's husband's coffin. He ripped the sponge off the outside. There are two bombs and a trigger inside. Turns out it was all a conspiracy on his part. Ellie's daughter was actually on the plane. He hid her in the equipment bay. He planted bombs on both sides of the girl's head. Then he found the captain. Jack gave him an account. Said Ellie wanted them to wire 50 million pounds immediately or they'd blow up the plane hey she has an accomplice on board she won't say who it is but that's who's holding the detonator they want the plane deboarded on the tarmac passengers first then the crew and they want a g3 fueled and waiting Jack said Ellie was carrying explosives through her husband's coffin. When he heard that, the captain panicked, but he tried to negotiate with Ellie. Jack stopped him right away. He lied and said that Ellie didn't want to negotiate with anyone, and from what he could see, Ellie clearly didn't want to hurt anyone, or she wouldn't have let the passengers off the plane first. He suggested that the captain ask the airline to wire the money immediately, to make Ellie think she was in control, and wait until all the passengers are off the plane. It's not too late to arrest her. Out of ideas, the captain nodded his head in agreement. Then he returned to the cabin. A stewardess suddenly stopped him. Turns out she was Jack's accomplice, and she was the one who pretended to get a call from ground, that there was no record of Ellie's daughter boarding the plane. She was the one who gave the captain the fake facts proving Ellie's daughter's death, but now she's a little nervous. Jack, on the other hand, had already made his plans. Any dead minutes after we land, they're gonna find her with a bullet hole through her head and a detonator in her hand. And the only witness, Ellie's daughter, would be blown to bits. And the next thing he knew, he got a message from the captain. The money had been wired to the designated account. Jack was happy. His plan was halfway there. All he had to do was wait for the right moment to take out Ellie. Then everything would be perfect. He lied to Ellie and said, We need to stay after the plane lands. When everyone's off the plane, two police officers would come and help them continue the search. And Ellie believed him. When the plane landed, all the passengers were off the plane, followed by the crew. But then Ellie saw the captain and suddenly rushed over to him, said she'd find his daughter in a few minutes, and when she did, she demanded an apology from the captain. The captain had finally had enough. Right. Your money has been wired, just as you asked. A G3 is waiting, just as you asked. Perhaps we can do without the pretense of the missing child now. When she heard those words, Ellie was confused. And Jack, seeing that he's about to be exposed, Jack was ready to get off the plane as if nothing had happened. But Ellie, looking at all the security and the way people were looking at her, she realized it was all Jack's plan. She yells at Jack to stop move. You get off the plane when I say you get off the plane! Jack stops pretending and launches himself directly at Ellie. At this point, everyone is convinced that Ellie is the hijacker. But if she dares to tell the truth, her daughter would be the first to die. After that, they let the crew off the plane. Jack closed the hatch, but just as he turned his head for a moment, Ellie hit him with a fire hydrant. While he was dazed, she grabbed her handcuffs and cuffed Jack to the railing. Then she found the detonator in another pocket. Just then, that stewardess came out. She'd been hiding all this time and hadn't got off the plane. Looking in the direction she came from, Ellie knew instantly that her daughter was hidden in the equipment bay. Jack pulled out the gun in his sock. Ellie saw it and ran away. Jack shot through the handcuffs and chased after her. Luckily, Ellie dodged his bullets. She was able to hide in the cockpit. Jack at the door was furious. He told her the truth in a provocative way. It turns out her husband didn't jump off the building himself. In Jack's plan, he needed to frame a hijacker who knew the structure of the plane, and Ellie was the perfect candidate. Then he pushed Ellie's husband off the building. Because the airport doesn't x-ray coffins, he could hide a bomb in it and take it on the plane, and then kidnap
kidnapped her daughter while she was sleeping and then worked with the stewardess to lie to Ellie that her daughter was dead and Ellie had climbed up to the overhead walkway. She threw a book to make a noise to make Jack think she was running away. She waited for Jack to fall for it and then went after her. She opened the cockpit door cautiously, but within a few steps, she was stopped by the stewardess. Ellie could see she was in a panic. Just a few forced questions made her mind go blank. Ellie took the opportunity to throw a punch. Jack, hearing the commotion, came after her, and Ellie ran to the equipment bay. Desperate, finally, she found her daughter, who was still unconscious, but she couldn't wake her daughter up no matter what. The sound of Jack coming after us is already overhead. Ellie looked at the two bombs and had an idea. She took her daughter and hid under Jack's feet. Jack screamed and provoked. Tell Ellie to come out and fight. Ellie, however, calmly moved round behind him. She took her daughter and hid in the passage. Jack also found her. What are you gonna do? Huh? You gonna blow us up? No, just you. With those words she closed the hatch and pressed the trigger. The plane burst into flames. A short time later, Ellie stepped off the plane with her daughter in her arms. As people looked through the smoke to see Ellie's face and the baby he was carrying, they realized that Ellie had been right from the start. After it's all over, the captain made a solemn apology to her. People are looking at Ellie like she's a hero, and I believe that from that moment on, no one would ever question a mother's determination to protect her child. This is a 2005 mystery thriller film called Flight Plan. Do well to watch it if you finds it interesting. Highly recommended.